Hi, everybody. Uh, today I want to talk to you about a new project that we're rolling out, uh, and it involves Mac OS and a Docker container for development. Uh, but let me back up real quick and give you an idea of what Mac Stadium is. So Mac Stadium basically deploys Macs at scale globally, and we provide an enterprise class hosting solution for Apple. So it is basically the AWS measure for Apple containers and hardware. Uh, we transform your normal trash can or your Mac Mini or whatever may work on your desk into a fully redundant enterprise class Mac infrastructure and data centers. Um, and that means more than just the server, we work with redundant power, uh, networking, uh, storage, SAN, we even virtualize infrastructure so that you can drive it like a true cloud uh, that makes it scalable and secure. Uh, and we have all kinds of customers, everybody from individual file servers and web hosts to folks that uh, do larger scale deployments, but our biggest user base by far are people like yourself who do development. Um, CICD pipelines drive a lot of our infrastructure. Um, I represent the software team at Mac Stadium, and one of the things we did when we came in is start building software for the front of Mac Stadium. Our goal was to make the customer experience there as smooth as possible. And again, we aspire to be like the clouds you know and love for other services. So my team uses Docker, which is a technology that uses containers, uh, so think fractional VMs, to build software that contain the software that you need to do the job. So we use that to deploy our software on, uh, on Mac Stadium. Um, we also use a, a tool called Docker for Mac. So as I'm giving a talk about uh, Docker, Rack, Docker, Docker Rack Mac OS, I, uh, I want to be clear that this is not Docker for Mac. We use Docker for Mac. We love it. It's awesome. It's a desktop tool on a Mac desktop that lets you run small Linux containers. And again, we use it for development. It also comes with Kubernetes, which we use to deploy and scale our services across our global data centers. Uh, and you say, okay, that's cool, but what does that mean for us? We're, we're the customer, we're not doing what you're doing. Uh, and we know that. We know Apple makes you build different. Um, and we know you need authentic Mac hardware to run, and you need Mac OS to build. Um, we also know you can't get that stuff anywhere. That's why we do what we do. But over time, as we've deployed our technology, we've heard the customers and we've learned from their experiences. And there's a learning curve with DevOps. There's complexity around building VM infrastructure. There's complexity managing all this now readily available infrastructure at scale. And it can be tricky to set up. And we want to bridge the gap between that and where you are and make it simple for a small team or a large team to focus back on dev and not so much on the infrastructure. That is where Mac OS and container came from. Uh, that was the problem we started to solve. So you may ask, okay, great, but why would somebody in their right mind want to do this? Cram a Mac OS into a box on top of a wheel and squish the flat, the operating <laughs> system. Um, it's not exactly that bad. So what we really were going after was putting Docker controls around Mac OS so that you can do the same things you can do with Docker and Kubernetes or with other code tools where you can generate capacity and containers that you need to build uh, quickly and easily. So this diagram kind of shows you some enterprise infrastructure that we deploy as a pod when you sign up for a containerized Mac OS. What it does is it wraps all this enterprise storage, networking, and hardware capacity and creates a virtual namespace for you to put your Mac OS images, uh, a, a blank namespace where you can put any kind of container of any sort that you want, and then the services that help you drive that. So we're introducing it today. It's called Orca. You'll see folks with the blue shirts on. It stands for Orchestration with Kubernetes on Apple. And how Orca works is this way. So we take genuine Apple hardware. We put a layer of customized Linux and our code on top of that, which has a Kubernetes layer. That Kubernetes layer helps us drive and manipulate Mac OS, which is in a Docker container. Um, the good part is we're not modifying the Mac OS in any way, shape, or form, so it's not a weird customized version of Mac OS, and we're using standard Docker wrapping around it, so it's not custom one-off stuff that you have to learn to figure out how to drive a Docker layer either. Uh, it integrates with standard controls like Kube Control and YAML, 
Uh, and you can use config software like Terraform and Ansible to use it as well. Um, here's an example of one of the configs. You can literally put whatever image type, whether that's Mojave or Catalina or High Sierra, um, and name it however you like, and specify the cores, the RAM, the memory, anything you need to describe the container state that runs your OS. So whatever kind of Mac or however much power you want that Mac to have is where you put it in here. Um, you can get to those things through the tools that we provide for Orca. So we're rolling it out with the CLI. It's self, uh, self-help. It uh, describes how to use the commands very clearly. You can do things like list your nodes, stop, start, and suspend your containers. We, of course, have an extensive API. As a developer, this is one of my favorite parts. It lets me integrate directly through a REST interface into the infrastructure, so I can literally command an entire data center with my REST interface. It's got interactive help. It runs on Postman. You can actually query the API uh, before you install it and figure out how the commands are going to work for you. And then keeping in the theme of Apple, who just rolled out the wonderful dark mode, here's our dark mode for working as well. <laughs> a UI that also opinionates what we think the API should be used like. Uh, it lets you list and run all your commands just like you would uh, through the CLI or the API. So that gives you three different ways to address your infrastructure. And you can start with the UI to get your head around it and then work your way back into the REST API to, to make it custom fit your environment and your development cycle. Uh, the other good thing is because you have a namespace where you can put whatever container you want, uh, you have First of all, the built-in controls of Kubernetes and Docker, so all the dashboards and monitoring tools that are out in the ecosystem are readily available to install easily and connect to your work. You can also deploy your own automated build tools and any other type of container you need to run in the environment. Here, for an example, we have the Kubernetes dashboard where you can see you're actually running pods and containers, and then behind that, we have a net data dashboard where you can actually monitor and see the performance of your environment. So today, we're officially announcing public beta for this product. It's open. You can sign up at www.maxstadium.com slash work with private. Uh, with the beta program, we will contact you and onboard you. We want you to have a good experience. So we'll literally walk you through how to use the tool and how to hook it up to your environment in a meaningful way. Uh, it is limited by the amount of capacity that we have available for the beta, so it's a first come, first serve. Um, we're going to test this for a couple of months and then a general release later in the summer where anybody can get it. Um, and if you want to just check it out or read up more, you can look at uh, www.maxstate.com slash orca for uh, more data and diagrams and deep dives on it. I will be available at our booth because this is a super fast topic, so uh, <laughs> we're right across, the, right across the doors there. But I would love to talk to you about your specific architecture or any deep dive questions on orca that you have. Uh, happy to answer anything. Thank you for your time.